Hello again, it's Locknoob, and I thought I'd do another video on how locks work. Specifically, how do combination dial padlocks actually work? More importantly, how do we exploit their design to um, our own end so that we can decode them and uh, reset the um, number? Why am I doing this video now? Well, YouTube user G-Man was struggling to get into his um, Abus 165. 40 and um, he sent it to me and I did manage to decode it and I'd love to do a video on how I decoded it very shortly. Um, we're going to put that to one side. Um, what I'm going to concentrate on is this Chinese um, quite cheap pad block which I've actually ground off the rivets of and taken apart for you so I can demonstrate how this actually works. Interestingly enough, despite being about three pounds or somewhere between four and five US dollars, it works exactly the same as the Abus 16540, despite this being, um, I think, three or four times more expensive. Okay, so how do these normally work? Well, you've got a load of dials, and I think I've put some of them upside down, but it doesn't matter. And it's all locked up, and you just turn it to the right number, which I think is 5455, I think, on this one, just randomly. And if that is the right number, then the shackle will just come free. Pretty easy stuff. If you rotate um, that the shackle by 90 degrees and, and depress it in um, while it's actually in its uh, true gate, then you can push the shackle down like that, change these dials up to whatever number you want, uh, release the shackle, and then that will be your new number. I couldn't figure out how uh, that actually happened. How how? How does turning the shackle 90 degrees and depressing um, it down, rotating the dials, actually change the actual key code? I couldn't figure this out for ages until I uh, read up on these locks. So let's actually have a look inside and see if we can reveal its mysteries. I have to say that I think the design of these is quite ingenious, and um, whilst they don't offer very much in the way of security, um, they are nevertheless quite a clever design and there are many 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 locks out there that use this design uh, from all of the main manufacturers okay so we're just levering this off it is sprung on the shackle um, so we've got to be careful that we don't get the whole thing to spring apart as we take the cover off there we go so what you'll see is we've got a a spring, the outer dials or wheels, and then an inner uh, wheel attached to the outer dial. So let's call this the shackle, the inner wheel, and the outer dial, just for um, argument's sake. Okay. And what you're doing is when you are putting in the code, you're turning these dials in turn and you can see that by turning the outer dial you turn the inner wheel. You also might notice that there are some little notches or fingers that come out from the um, inner wheels and grip on two notches at every number, well notches at some of the numbers on the inside of the outer wheels. That is just basically um, you know, a classic kind of sprocket system where you you have a, you know an outer wheel attached to the um, outer dial attached to the inner wheel just by these uh, see as cog teeth if you like. Okay, so you'll also see that there are the teeth attached or which um, allow the outer dial to grip the inner wheel. Um, only on one side of these one, two, three, four inner wheels. So when you're when you turn this shackle around and you and you push it in, what it's doing is um, essentially pushing all of these this um, tooth here. Oh, well, I'll undo it in a minute. But this this tooth here is pushing down on all of these um, inner wheels onto this spring and it disconnects the outer dials. Let's take this out and I'll show you what actually happens. So there we go. So let's take the spring off. Let's take some of these dials off here. 
and let's take some of these um, inner wheels off as well, just leaving us. There we go. The inner wheel and the outer dial. So here are the teeth which will allow the outer dial to grip, okay, like this. When you push down the shackle, what it does is it pushes all of these inner wheels down by half, which allows to rotate freely to any number you want. Then when you push the, uh, let go of the shackle, the spring will push them all back into the dials and they will stay um, fixed to whichever number you chose. So that's quite ingenious, isn't it? It kind of disconnects the uh, the gear, if you like, and then uh, allows you to uh, change the, the the outer dial and then reconnect it. So it's quite a nice mechanism. So how does the lock actually lock up? Well, you'll see on the shackle we have these teeth here. So one, two, three, four, corresponding with each of the inner wheels. Um, these inner wheels, you'll see, actually have um, a spot which is just there, it's actually delineated by this slightly larger tooth on the outside, where there is a gap in this outer ring, or, well, inner ring, um, of metal within the tube itself. So you can imagine that if you align these teeth all with that gap, it can slide through. If you turn it um, so that the tooth at each stage um, isn't at that gap, then it locks. So this gap is called the gate, and if you look carefully, you'll see that this is a sneaky design. This has false gates. There is a gate, a true gate, then there's a bit of metal, and then there's a little ledge, a bit of metal, then ledge, and another high uh, bit of metal, then another ledge. What that means is, with a common attack where you would pull on the shackle and you'd rotate each dial until you felt a click where it went into the true gate is defeated by having these false gates because it's very hard to tell by feel uh, when you're rotating round is that a true gate like this or slide 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 does it fall into a false gate like this so let's show you a bit closer so there's a false gate there a true gate there and sometimes you'll hear a click like that when uh, it falls into a false gate or even a true gate so just as a, a summary the shackle is held in place by these inner wheels the only way the shackle can move through the inner wheels is if the gate is aligned with the teeth. Um, that would be like that. The outer dials can disconnect from the inner wheels once you depress the shackle down once it's open. And that'll allow you to turn the outer dials freely and then reconnect the, the outer dial with the inner wheel at the position you choose, essentially recoding the lock. So how can we do, exploit this clever design so that we can actually attack this lock? Well, the thing is, is that um, you have to rely on the feel between um, the lock entering a false gate, like, where's that tooth, like this, because when it's in the false gate, it will have some movement within that gate, as you can see there. So that, that to, but it, the, the tooth on the shackle is rubbing against metal um, on the inside of that false gate. That means that it has drag. Um, sometimes you even find the the true gate is slightly larger than the false gate. Um, so. Either way, you tend to find that the true gate, which is like this, actually has a, either a little bit more movement in it or a little less drag, and it feels a bit sloppier um, when you're um, rotating the dial. 
So it's still able to uh, be picked by exploiting um, the field between the true gate and the false gates. So that means you can do an attack where you um, pull on the shackle and rotate the dials until you feel when each of those um, uh, dials or wheels are actually presenting the true gate to the shackle. So I hope that was uh, relatively interesting. I hope you now understand a little bit more about how these combination dial padlocks work, how important these inner wheels are, how um, the false gates uh, trap the teeth on the shackle, um, which obfuscates the true gate um, when you're doing a shackle pull attack on these locks. Okay, so next video, I hope I can show you how you can take advantage of this design to decode uh, this type of lock. You'll also notice that these um, dials do not um, move anywhere near as freely. It's because uh, if you were to cut this apart, you'll see that there is actually a small um, set of finger springs touching the bottom of these dials to um, provide a little bit of tension on them. It actually makes it easier to, uh, to use the lock in real life. Um, although it does slightly uh, cloud the feedback um, on the dials if you're trying to pick it or decode it. All right, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.